Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. Lo and behold, two non-DC books on my pull list this week. What has the world come to? Let's begin with Superwoman number 4, written by Phil Jimenez and art by Emanuela Lupacino. Oh boy. While this wasn't as overwritten as previous issues have been, this is still not very good. The disjointed nature of how it's written isn't exactly helped by also having the character being confused about where she is on any given page. Lana is seeing ghosts, or rather, one ghost, Lois Lane. The dead one, naturally. And Ghost Lois seems to transport Lana from scene to scene like in A Christmas Carol, but also sometimes not. The story is very simple. Bad guy Lena Luther wants to destroy the city, but the book tries to dress this up with side plots supporting cast issues and inner monologue about the state of Lana's life. Too bad that none of those things are very interesting. Lana is not very likable, and this book doesn't provide any reasons for me to be invested in her character. Supergirl number 3, written by Steve Orlando and art by Brian Ching. I won't say that this is bad, it's just a little bit uninteresting. That's a sad thing to say about a book that has an army of cyborg Kryptonians in it. Yes, Cyborg Superman, aka Supergirl's dad, has quote-unquote resurrected the population of Argo City by making them into cyborgs. They don't have any personality though, they're just robots wearing the faces of the dead, and the next step of his plan is to somehow give them their life back. I feel that this book is trying to play up the emotional nature of being forced to stand against your father, but it's not really hitting. There's nothing to tempt Supergirl with the bargain he tries to strike with her. Supergirl has accepted the death of her family. There's no ethical choice to make here really, not that there has to be one, but I think the story needs something else to make it interesting. Batgirl and the Birds of Prey number 4, written by Julian Shauna Benson and art by Rogue Antonio. Okay, I'd say this was better than the previous issues. Aside from in the beginning claiming that this isn't going to be the Godfather, then proceeding to doing the Godfather, I don't really have anything to complain about with this. Some problems remain from previous issues, like the sudden shamminess from Black Canary and what the snake people are all about, but that isn't really at the forefront here. Instead, this focuses heavily on Huntress's backstory. I'd like to know the significance of this comic deliberately obscuring Huntress's mother's face in the flashbacks. Like I said, this is an improvement in both the writing and the art Department, as the faces aren't nearly as distracting in this. Star Trek Boldly Go number 2, written by Mike Johnson and art by Tony Shasteen. I didn't have a chance to pick up issue 1 of this when it came out, but I've since read it and I will try to summarize it here. It takes place after the movie Star Trek Beyond, a movie I really enjoyed by the way where Kirk has taken temporary command of the starship Endeavor, while the Enterprise is being rebuilt. It's mostly just about where the main cast of characters are at this moment, an opening act if you will. The inciting incident is that another Federation starship is being attacked by a for the audience unseen foe. The only clue is a message that when translated echoes the words resistance is futile, words that should be familiar to any Star Trek fan. Ah yes, the Borg. In this issue, they are doing pretty much the things they were doing in the early days of TNG, dissecting starships and scooping up cities. But they also do later stuff like assimilating people. No nanoprobes though, only old fashioned surgery it seems. I like this. Even though it's doing TNG stuff before TNG, it's better than in Enterprise because this is a new universe and we're not getting TNG in this timeline. Also, Kirk is not Archer, which helps. I like the art in this also. It does the thing where it looks like the actors, but it doesn't look traced or stiff and creepy. Wonder Woman number 10, written by Greg Rook and art by Nicholas Scott. As usual with this book, this flashback part is much better than the stuff set in the present. I'm finally starting to understand what Rucka is doing with this, introducing threats and plotline in the present parts of the story and putting them in context with the flashbacks. I won't however say that it's working, because the way that it's done right now, I think it hurts the story set in the present. It feels like he's writing two parts of his run simultaneously, and is more focused on how it will work in trade form rather than singles. This issue issue on its own I think is really good. It's Diana's first taste of man's world, and it's less simplified than has been told previously. There is character depth, good dialogue, good premise, and fantastic art. I think Wonder Woman comes to life here more as a character than usual. I get a feel for her as a person, not as an archetype. 
The Flash, number 10, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Felipe Watanabe. This is a fairly typical issue of a comic book when it comes to conflict and drama between characters. Secret identities, responsibility, trust issues, standard young superhero fare. Barry is kind of taking a back seat in his own book. Even though most of it is told through his perspective, this is almost all about Kid Flash. It's mostly setting up this villain that I don't think is named in the book, but it has to be Shade, right? He looks very different from how I remember him, but I can't think of anyone else that fits. This issue also marks the return of another character that I don't think has been in the comics since the big reboot. Chunk, friend of Wally West with a black hole in his stomach. Literally. Although I doubt that's the case here. I've got to be honest and say I've never really been a fan of that particular character. Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Adventures number 1, written by Matthew K. Manning and art by John Samariva. This is the second Batman Turtles crossover in quite a short amount of time. Last time it was the current comics incarnation of both properties, and it was well received by both fans and critics. This time it's the current cartoon version of the Turtles and the old Batman animated series meeting, instead of doing a direct sequel. What's not so great about that is that once again we're doing the first meeting of the characters, and by necessity reusing the portal between worlds idea to bring these two franchises together. I hope this story won't just be a beat for beat repeat of the previous one. I'm also not that thrilled about the art. These are versions of the character from two visually distinct sources, and I don't think the art manages to capture that. Sure, I wouldn't want the turtles to be 3D models, but it's not just that. The Batman side is also not looking very on model. We'll see where this goes, but I'm trepidatious. All-Star Batman number 4, written by Scott Snyder and art by John Romita Jr. This story is exhausting. You really feel how tired you would be if you were in the same situation that Batman is in. As far as the plot goes, it's so twisty that it's hard to keep track of who wants what and why. I really wonder how long this book can keep up this breakneck pace. I also don't really know what to talk about in this without getting into specifics and spoilers. I'm looking forward to this story being over, not because it's a bad read, but because I'm itching to fully understand it. Detective Comics number 944, written by James Tinian IV and art by Eddie Barrows. I like this quite a bit. New villains who pose a credible threat and really gets under the skin of the heroes? Why they think they are the victims of the Batman is a stretch though. The thing the villains have in common is that they are all victims in one way or another in the battles between Batman and his villains. Why they blame Batman and not the villains for their misfortune is not that clear to me. I guess it comes down to the old debate of if it's Batman's presence that creates the villain or if it's just a response to the craziness of the city. Side note, did Leslie Tompkins really need to be de-aged? Action Comics number 967, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Tyler Kirkham. Alright, I've got to give this props. This issue was a lot better than this series has been for a while. Sure, we are no closer to finding out anything about the questions that we've established since Rebirth, but as far as the plot of this story goes, we do get some answers. I'm now a little bit more invested in what's going on. And I must say I do enjoy this heroic Lex Luthor. It's quite a change. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows Number 1, written by Gary Conway and art by Ryan Stegman. First Marvel book on this show. This is a book that I've been really looking forward to. When it comes to superheroes, Spider-Man was always my first and my favorite, and I've been saddened by the state of Spider-Man comics in recent years. So while I've been looking forward to this, I've also been dreading this. It doesn't suck. Thank you. Quite the opposite, in fact. It's endearing. It's fun feels like Spider-Man should. It's not entirely without problems though. The way that the suited up MJ and Annie are introduced isn't ideal. Instead of showing it to us organically, it's told through some pretty clunky exposition. But that's a really minor nitpick in the grand scheme of things. For those of you who have no idea what this book is, it's a continuation of the miniseries of the same name that ran as part of Secret Wars. It's an alternate universe where Peter and MJ are still married and have a kid. No, not Mayday but anime. I don't think it's necessary to have read that to read this, but it probably helps somewhat. So yeah, I'm recommending this, and I can't wait for more. So that was what I read this week. Quite a long list of books. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. If you did not enjoy it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. I am done for this week.